right? So we could think about, say, lithium too. Now, what orbitals do we, are we going to have to consider here for lithium? since it's over here, it must have some electrons in 2s. On the other hand, it doesn't look like it's going to have to use the 2p block over here. So I'm not going to bother drawing down the 2p block. Now we need to figure out how many electrons the lithium will be contributing to the molecule. So let's use our periodic table. How many electrons will the lithium be contributing? How can we figure that out? One. Because it's in row one. That tells us how many valence electrons it's contributing. But the way we're doing this now, we need to contribute the total number of electrons that the lithium is contributing. And we can figure that out from the periodic table as well. Is that three? Is it three? Because it has an atomic number of three. Three. Yeah. Okay. Since it has three protons, a neutral lithium would have three electrons. So where should I put those? Well. One, two, three. That just confirms what we could already see from the periodic table. Lithium would put, here's a 1s electron, here's a second 1s electron, and here's a 2s electron. And that's what we put in here. All right, now, if we're going to form a lithium-2 molecule, we have to ask what molecular orbitals we're going to form. Well, again, we're going to have an overlap between orbitals. Now, generally speaking, you get overlap between orbitals of similar size. So I'm not going to try to overlap the 1s with the 2s. That wouldn't give us a good overlap. We're going to overlap the 1s from this atom with the 1s from this atom. Well, when these two orbitals overlap, how many molecular orbitals do they give us? Two. That's conservation of orbitals. If we're overlapping two atomic orbitals, that should give us two molecular orbitals. What, what will be the names or the labels for those molecular orbitals? And remember that one of them will be at a higher energy than the 1s, and one will be at a lower energy. We should call this one sigma and one sigma star. And we can go beyond that to say this is a sigma orbital made out of 1s orbitals. And this is also made out of 1s orbitals. Did your instructor do that? Yes, they did. Actually, your instructor left out this one. They just wrote things like this. But we can see that this is a sigma orbital made out of the overlap between 1s orbitals. And this is an antibonding sigma orbital made out of the overlap between 1s orbitals. Okay, now we need to figure out the overlap between these orbitals. Well, when these s orbitals overlap, do you think that's going to give us a sigma or a pi overlap? Sigma. Sigma. Overlap between s orbitals is always sigma. Maybe we should say what, do you guys know what the shape of an s orbital is? Mm -hmm. What? Sphere. Yeah. That would look like this. Uh, so when two s orbitals overlap, it looks like this. Why is this called sigma? Well, notice that if you looked at this from the side, 
it would, you would see a spherical cross-section. From the side, this would still look spherical. Sigma is the Greek letter for S, and it means that from the side, this looks like an S orbital. Um, this is not the only way to get S orbitals. For example, this is the shape of a P orbital. You can see that from the side, if you have a P orbital overlapping with an S orbital, it still looks like an S orbital. Does that make sense that from, from the right, this has a, a spherical cross section? From the right, you wouldn't be able to see this figure eight shape. You would just see the spherical cross section. That's why this is also called a sigma uh, molecular orbital or sigma bond. On the other hand, let's say that you had side to side overlap between two P orbitals side-to-side -side overlap between two p orbitals, well, this is what's called a pi bond, or a pi molecular orbital. Well, pi is the Greek letter for p, because from the side, this looks like a p orbital, right? From the side, we would see a figure eight cross-section in this case. Um, from the side, this doesn't look like a p orbital anymore, it looks spherical, but when you're looking at side-to-side -side overlap, it still looks like a p orbital. So these are the two different types of overlap that we can have. Basically, you can have head-to-head -head overlap, which is always sigma or you can have side-to-side -side overlap between p orbitals. The only way to get a pi orbital is side-to-side -side overlap between p orbitals, but there's many ways to get sigma orbitals, many different types of head-to-head -head overlap. For example, I can also show two p orbitals. And from the side, this would still have a spherical cross-section and look like a sigma. If you're using um, hybrid orbitals like sp2 or sp3, you can still get a sigma bond because hybrid orbitals have similar shapes to p orbitals, just more lopsided. In any case, what did we decide? Are these going to overlap to give us sigma or pi? Sigma. So yeah, s orbitals can only give you sigma overlap. What would that look like? Well, again, one of these dashes should be lower than this line, and one of the dashes should be higher than the original atomic orbital line. Notice that I'm comparing these two dashes to this atomic orbital, whereas we can compare these two dashes to this atomic orbital. What would be a good label for this dash? Sigma, or sigma 2, sigma 2s. Yeah, your instructor would look like would call this sigma 2s, because it's a sigma molecular orbital made out of the overlap between 2s atomic orbitals. Again, let's try to keep clear in our mind the difference between the 2s atomic orbitals and the sigma molecular orbital. And how should I label this? Um, sig sigma star 2s. Right. This would be the anti-bonding orbital, because it's higher energy, and this would be the bonding orbital. Now, try placing the electrons in this diagram. So would that electron from the 2s still go here? Everyone wants to go as low as possible. Okay. So it wouldn't like jump down here or anything? Ah, well, everyone wants to be as low as possible. Oh, okay. So oh. maybe the best thing to start with is how many electrons am I placing? Six, right? We're placing six electrons total. Does that make oh, sense? Yeah, three, three. Okay. three from here and three from here. Oh, okay. um, so uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. All right. Uh, it's not even actually worthwhile to ask where each of these electrons are coming from. It doesn't make it. Does, it's not really very helpful to say that this electron is coming from here, say, or this electron is coming from here, say. You can just imagine that all the electrons are being put into a, in a, into a pool of electrons, and then we're just arranging that pool of electrons in these molecular orbitals in the lowest possible places. There's no, there's no advantage to saying that this electron came from a particular atomic orbital. Um, we can think of all of them as being fungible. Uh, so uh, all that really matters is the total number of electrons that we're placing. So I would never want to put anyone here until I've filled up this orbital. So Even though this is anti-bonding, it's still lower energy than this bonding orbital because um, it's anti-bonding with respect to a, a, a lower energy atomic orbital. I'm sorry, you were going to say? Oh, yeah, I was just saying So that. we should always, I mean, basically we're building up. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's the Aufbau principle. Uh, the Aufbau principle for, has, is that a term you guys have yeah, heard? Yeah, from last semester, yeah. remember? So <laughs> the basic principle for placing electrons is the Aufbau principle. I think Aufbau is German for building up. And you can see how we built up with the electrons. We only occupied the higher spaces when the lower spaces were filled. Let's figure out what the bond order would be. What do you get for the bond order here? So for the, the six bonding orbitals, you would use 
the just the regular sigma ones without the star. That's you right. Use both of those. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. How many electrons are there in the bonding orbitals? Four. Yeah, one, two, three, four. And how many electrons in the anti-bonding orbitals? So we get a bond order of one. This is again matching up with our Lewis approach because if you actually drew the Lewis diagram for Li, this would be what the Lewis diagram would look like, a single bond between them. 